Men generally agree that the highest good attainable by action is happiness, and identify living well and doing well with happiness. No one is able to attain the truth adequately, while, on the other hand, no one fails entirely, but everyone says something true about the nature of all things, and while individually they contribute little or nothing to the truth, by the union of all, a considerable amount is amassed. The man who is truly good and sensible bears all fortunes, we presume, becomingly, and always does what is noblest under the circumstances. Some identify happiness with virtue, some with practical wisdom, others with a kind of philosophical wisdom, others add or exclude pleasures, and yet others include prosperity. We agree with those who identify happiness with virtue, for virtue belongs with virtuous behavior, and virtue is only known by its acts. The wise man does not expose himself needlessly to danger, since there are few things for which he cares sufficiently, but he is willing, in great crises, to give even his life, knowing that under certain conditions, it is not worthwhile to live. We should not only be grateful to those whose opinions we share, but also to those who have gone astray, for even the latter have contributed something, since they have prepared the condition for us. No happy man can become miserable, for he will never do acts that are hateful and mean. All men seek one goal, success or happiness. The only way to achieve true success is to express yourself completely in service to society. First, have a definite, clear, practical ideal, a goal, an objective. Second, have the necessary means to achieve your ends, wisdom, money, materials and methods. Third, adjust all your means to that end. Every art and every inquiry, and similarly every action and pursuit, is thought to aim at some good, and for this reason, the good has been declared to be that at which all things aim. If there is some end in the things we do, which we desire for its own sake, clearly this must be the chief good. Knowing this will have a great influence on how we live our lives. If things are good in themselves, the good will appear as something identical in them all, but the accounts of the goodness in honor, wisdom and pleasure are diverse. The good, therefore, is not some common element answering to one idea. We praise the reason or rational part of the soul, because it exhorts a right and to the best cause, but clearly there is in them, besides the reason, some other natural principle which fights with and strains against the reason. It is absurd to make external circumstances responsible, and not oneself, and to make oneself responsible for noble acts, and pleasant objects responsible for base ones. We punish a man for his ignorance, if he is thought to be responsible for his ignorance. Everything done by reason of ignorance is involuntary. The man who has acted in ignorance 
has not acted voluntarily since he did not know what he is doing. Not every wicked man is ignorant of what he ought to do and what he ought to abstain from. By such errors, men become unjust and bad. It is the mark of an educated man to look for precision in each class of thing, insofar as its nature admits. There are three things which inspire confidence in the orator's own character. The three, namely, that induce us to believe a thing apart from any proof of it. Good sense, good moral character, and good will. Even if there be one good which is universally predictable or is capable of independent existence, it could not be attained by man. It is absurd to hold that a man ought to be ashamed of being unable to defend himself with his limbs, but not of being unable to defend himself with speech and reason. When the use of rational speech is more distinctive of a human being than the use of his limbs. And if it to be objected that one who uses such power of speech unjustly might do great harm, that is a charge which may be made in common against all good things except virtue, and above all against the things that are most useful as strength, health, wealth, generalship. A man can confer the greatest of benefits by a right use of these, and inflict the greatest of injuries by using them wrongly. If we consider the function of man to be a certain kind of life, and this to be an activity of the soul implying a rational principle, and the function of a good man to be the noble performance of these, and if any action is well performed when it is performed in accordance with the appropriate principle. If this is the case, human good turns out to be the activity of the soul in accordance with virtue. Politics appears to be the master of art, for it includes so many others, and its purpose is the good of man. While it is worthy to perfect one man, it is finer and more godlike to perfect a nation. There are three prominent types of life, pleasure, political, and contemplative. The mass of mankind is slavish in their tastes, preferring a life suitable to beasts. They have some ground for this view, since they are imitating many of those in high places people of superior refinement identify happiness with honor or virtue and generally the political life. Political science spends most of its pains on forming its citizens to be of good character and capable of noble acts. The life of money-making is one undertaken under compulsion, since wealth is not the good we are seeking and is merely useful for the sake of something else. Knowledge is not necessarily for the possession of virtues, whereas the habits which result from doing just and temperate acts counts for all. By doing just acts, the just man is produced. By doing temperate acts, the temperate man, without acting well, no one can become good. Most people avoid good acts and take refuge in theory, and think that by becoming philosophers, they will become good. If the virtues are neither passions nor facilities, all that remains is that they should be states of character. Virtue is a state of character concerned with choice, being determined by rational principle 
as determined by the moderate man of practical wisdom. The end being what we wish for, the means what we deliberate about, and we choose our actions voluntarily. The exercise of virtues is concerned with means, and therefore both virtue and vice are in our power. Death is the most terrible of all things, for it is the end, and nothing is thought to be either good or bad for the dead. All men agree that a just distribution must be according to merit in some sense. They do not all specify the same sort of merit, but Democrats identify with free men, supporters of oligarchy with wealth or noble birth, and supporters of aristocracy with excellence. When a distribution is made from the common funds of a partnership, it will be according to the same ratio which the funds were put into the business by the partners, and any violation of this kind of justice would be an injustice. People are different and unequal, and yet must somehow be equated. This is why all things that are exchanged must be comparable and to this end, money has been introduced as an intermediate, for it measures all things. In truth, demand holds things together, and without it, there would be no exchange. There are three kinds of constitution, monarchy, aristocracy, and that based on prosperity, timocratic. The best is monarchy, the worst is timocratic. Monarchy deviates to tyranny, the king looks to his people's interest, the tyrant looks to his own. Aristocracy passes over to oligarchy by the badness of its rulers who distribute contrary to equity. Most of the good things go to themselves, an office always to the same people, paying most regard to wealth. Thus the rulers are few and are bad men instead of the most worthy. Timocracy passes over to democracy, since both are ruled by the majority. Of those we have wronged, and of our enemies or rivals, it is not the passionate and outspoken who we have to fear, but the quiet, dissembling, unscrupulous. Since we never know when they are upon us, we can never be sure they are at a safe distance. When people are feeling friendly and placable, they often think one sort of thing. When they are feeling angry or hostile, they think either something totally different or the same thing with a different intensity. <laughs> 